Yeah, Sharif's funny because he's not really like you don't really like hate publicly on your Twitter and Instagram and shit. You're very positive social media or whatever. But you know, like if I bring up Little Wayne, if I bring up Little Wayne or something. Oh wait, 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 wait. oh no! Actually, we're recording, man. Like, yeah. It's... Wait, hold up. Uh, Slava says he's in the room. Yeah, he just got here. Okay, just cool. Oh, okay. No, I'm not a hater because I honestly I think like hand is like literally pointless. <laughs> like, we, we hold on, to... hold on. You 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 hate on Lil Wayne, not in a bad yeah, way. No. You don't. <laughs> yeah, if I don't like if I don't like something, I don't like it. But <laughs> you talking about or some like I'm not going to call you in the middle of the night like yo, Lil Wayne, or shit. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine getting that 2 a.m. call from your buddy who just wants to be like, yo, we got to talk about this Lil Wayne problem that's going on in this country. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, nah. But if, if I'm talking about something or anything, if I don't fuck with it, I don't fuck with it. But when I say hating is corny to me, I mean the aspect of just like people the who just... The public shit. Always, the public shit. Like the, the like yeah, using... Yeah. Even, even besides the public shit, just people who always... Saying some negative slit or some slick shit or like some fuck like to me I look at all of that in like the hate and aspect too. And yeah, fucking social media, that's I can't do that. That shit is weird. I rather yeah. just tweet I rather just tweet about my own music in my own life than talk about another person's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, welcome to Nerzy. This is yet another edition of the Nerzy Guide to Ethical Hating. I'm Drew. I'm joined by my co-host Slava and Trey, as well as our producer Joe. And with us today, we have Fat Boy Sharif, the Grammy-winning artist whose work you may know from collaborations with luminaries such as Maroon 5, Pitbull, Taylor uh-huh. Swift, uh-huh. Drake, uh-huh. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, John uh-huh. Leguizamo. Uh, and the one and only, <laughs> drum roll please, Terrence Howard. Yes, yes. I can't believe I forgot about uh, the half season art Come on, man. Did on Come industry. on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? What's going on? What's good? Thank y'all for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for coming. For sure. (laughs) All right, so it's 2 a.m. You are the president. Uh, You have just realized that Lil Wayne sucks ass. You have to call Joe, your (laughs) producer, uh, with whom you have collaborated on many classic songs uh what are you telling him president sharif well i wouldn't do that at 2 a.m because most likely i'd be sleeping or doing something way more fun so (laughs) that would just be brought up whenever i uh whenever he brought him up to me again okay i always try to play little wayne in the studio and then i'll start to get the hate (laughs) No, I'm just like I don't want to hear that shit. That's it. That, that's not. Oh, wait, 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 what, what do you mean? Like you don't want to nah, hear that shit? Like, is there that's is there an air, is there an era of Lil Wayne that you dislike, or like just Lil Wayne as a concept, or nah, like are, never, are you I'm a big Pusha T fan and you're like fuck Lil Wayne or like yeah? Nah, I just never fucked with his music. Like simple, like <laughs> like yeah. So D- D- Dove making it seem way more. As you can see, that's how much he loves him. He's making it a way bigger issue than fucking. <laughs> just being like, yeah, I don't like that shit. Okay. No, kind of, <laughs> kind of the reason I brought it up is because I was talking about before how uh, you're you're a, like, and I I try to be, but I'm not as good at it. Is like public hating. It it doesn't really come off great for a lot of artists who are just dropping rap music, even though they do it. But, like, I was just talking about behind the scenes. You're very open with music you do and don't like, and Lil Wayne is one of the artists you definitely do not like. You know what I mean? That's all. Well, yeah, no. I, like I said, I'm not going to be fake, so... Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you're showing me something, and you're like, how do you feel about this? 
I don't feel nothing about it. I don't think it's fucking dope. Like, <laughs> but after I put that out there, we can, can we can go about our day. I rather listen to stuff that we both think is dope. To me, that's the funnest part, right? There. Like, Fair enough. Okay, so you said you're not a hater. Like, let's say you're a constructive criticizer. What is it about Lil Wayne that, like, you think he needs to do better or, like, had to do better for, like, years now? Like, two decades now. No, I just was never really a fan of his music, to tell you the truth. And when shit like that, like, if I don't really fuck with it, I don't really super analyze and examine. I'm just like, eh, it's not really really doing it for me like it's doing it for other people. (laughs) Is there anything he could do? Anything he could do. How can how can Lil Wayne redeem himself in your eyes? No, that's what I'm saying. I was never a fan of the work. So <laughs> <laughs> we gotta move on from Lil Wayne. Hey, he's like, he's, Lil yeah, Wayne. I've never seen anything about him where he could change and it's just like, oh yeah, okay, this is cool. <laughs> but overall on some full like project, I never was super duper like uh I never gave a shit really. Oh no! I, I I okay across projects. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he has a classic project. Disagree, but let's look. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah, Disagree. he he has a he's obviously one of the best technical rappers of our lifetimes. But like, I don't think he has a classic album. I, I think most of his albums need to be somewhere between like three to seven long short or uh, seven songs shorter. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, I would. I would. Classic. I would argue. I would disagree on that. Yeah. Would you, if Lil Wayne DM'd you and was like, listen, man, I love your stuff. I want to give you a free verse. Would you, would you take a free verse from Wayne? Also, would, this podcast is just going to be us interrogating you about Lil Wayne. We're not. No, absolutely uh, not. Yeah, we, 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 yeah, we, yeah, we, no, we know, we know, we found, we found our topic for the next hour and a half or so. Oh, yeah. I know. No shit. I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> Sharif would just forward it my way and try to look and try to do a favor for me, I think. Right. Um so I mean like just off the top of your head, like since you know you were a musician, um, what is sort of what do you think makes for the elements of like a good diss in hip hop or like Another way of asking it is like, what is like a good rap disc that you can like think of off the top of your head? A particular song or kind of just like the elements of it that I would be like, oh, that's, uh, I connect with it on the aspect of like, oh, that's dope type thing. Oh, you mean like, are, are you saying like particular disc songs? Um, it could be okay, anything, like, honestly. Honestly, uh, let's go with both. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, all right, so for me, I would say I'm a, when it comes to a classic this song, I'm always a fan of just the truth in the lyrics. So like, just certain songs where you'll hear something and you'll be like, damn, this is exactly true, like what he's saying about this artist. Whether it's something about the type of, the style of the music he make, or maybe it's something about the fan base, or maybe it's an interaction they had that you might hear on a song 10 years ago and then five years later the, you hear one of the artists like, yeah, that exactly happened. When we ran into, we ran into each other, he was scared as hell. This and that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I would say track-wise, I would say a lot of just the classic stuff. So the uh, the No Vaseline from Q, something like that, that it's kind of just like, all right, one of the facts on the song is I'm gonna talk about your manager stealing your money, which the manager was stealing their money. So it's <laughs> it's, even, it's something where you can't really be like, oh, you just saying something, you just talking, you just making shit up type thing. Like even like you have what up push your team before the this with him and Drake. Like oh, you are hiding a child. Yeah, you yeah, are like, hiding, you you are hiding a child isn't still insane, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like stuff like that, that it's like, damn, you might rap better than me, but I'm kind of <laughs> like, you might you might can rap better than me, or you might can sell more records than me, but I'm kind of like pulling back layers of your actual like uh, person as a man. Like mm-hmm. to me, those, those were the classic diss records 
once you start breaking through those walls, like, for that. That's like on TakeOver, where Jay-Z starts doing math yes. on Nas's career. And he's like, well, you've been in this 10 years, I've been in this five years, so let's see, how many albums is that? Let's check the scoreboard. That's devastating, because if you tell someone to check the scoreboard, you've won. No, 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 no. See? I can't even say that. Because literally, that was Jay giving his opinion on Nas's albums not being good. Because literally, Nas had like three albums out before that. Illmatic, classic album. It was written. Some people loved it. Some people wasn't feeling it. I am, and then it was Illmatic. So yeah, he said two. Me, no, no, no. But I was, I was saying to me that's more of just Jay giving a saying some fly shit and giving an opinion. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you got like you got two whack ass albums compared to like I said, the you hiding the child, your manager <laughs> stealing your money. Um, <laughs> You homeless, like shit, that you, like shit that you can be like, yeah, that's an actual fact. Like he said, he said he beat the shit out of that dude, and reports came out that they actually fought. He beat the shit out of that dude. Like I like those type of disses. Like y'all remember the song "Whack to Whack" by Sauce Walker? Uh, yes, I yes Jersey. I remember whack to whack. Oh, do you remember that one Sauce Walker song where he's dissing Future at the end? And no, what? It, it, it's not even him rapping. He's just like saying stuff. He's like, "Yo, you you share a baby mama with another dude? Yeah, you know, and he's like, yeah, you ain't seen your kids in fucking seven months." And then it's like, this is wildly specific. And then it was like, somebody was like, "Oh, this is about Future." And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing I love about Whack to Whack is uh, when he just sort of roars, how a man going to let another man pee on him? And then it turned out that, like, T.I.'s friend was really yep. drunk in a movie yep. theater and mm -hmm. peed and on Drake's leg. Yeah, yeah well, 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 well Meek, Meek, was, yeah, Meek was the first one to put that out. And, like, when he and uh, fucking, what was it? Like, when did Whack to Whack come out? Oh. After Whack to Whack. Because I remember when Meek and uh, Drake were in that beef or whatever, uh, Meek had that like return diss track that was like, uh, and then and he was like, yeah, I mean, remember when someone peed on you? And it was like, yeah. wait, it was it was like I would have made an entire song about that fact if yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then yeah, man, that song was called it, "Wanna it, Know," and Drake called in a copyright strike on it because it used the Undertaker intro. Oh my God. Oh, he's playing 4D chess over here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really fucking funny. That's the most Drake thing ever. Did you see yeah. his most recent little uh, Twitch stream? Oh, yeah. I saw that little. That's some hater yeah. shit. I, I only saw he... part of it. Like, who was he hating on? Metro Boomin. Oh, <laughs> I, Metro I, I think I. Tweets and deletes. And that's what he was mad at him about? That was one of the little the little shots that he sent out. It was a uh, yeah. It was a deranged. Is he mad straight. like Metro don't work with him enough, or like what's going on here? I think Metro's mad at him for like other reasons. There's incredibly extensive YouTube documentaries done about this very topic that I can recommend. Um, it's let's, watch for, let, let's watch a full run right now on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's what funny. Were you gonna you say? I was gonna say, you know what I would probably say. It's a mixture of all of that. That's I would say is probably my favorite this song ever. The uh, Eminem Nell in the Coffin track about Benzino. Perfect this song. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I think I know that track. I gotta check it out. Also, Honestly, like, what what is, what is some of y'all's more favorite? Like more like recent diss tracks. Like let's say like one, two, three years. I have no Radius. idea. Like, I don't even really hear diss tracks like that. Probably that push, I would probably say only that push the T shirt is the only thing that like really made waves. Uh, there, there's a Rob Forty Nine song that's really called a uh, good called Houston Girls, and in the middle of it, he's just like, "Yo, fuck Doughboy, Doughbeezy, you're a bitch," and it's just like it catches <laughs> you off guard. <laughs> but the whole song is so good that you have to consider it a diss track. But it's really good. Okay, I was um, going to bring up who I smoke. Uh, it was like That's... I forget who I smoke it with the Vanessa Carlton fucking uh, <laughs> yeah. sample. Yeah. Who, who also, uh, 
it's it's a few people and they were all going after one person it's like damn first of all nobody liked this dude that four people got on the track dissing them yeah but it was like the uh thousand miles sample and they were on a golf course oh, I saw that. <laughs> yeah yeah and then ken the man uh has a diss track where like she's going after someone very very specifically like she gets to the point she's like you know what fuck your ugly ass baby too and it was like okay like you know, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> she's like, who I forget? And it, it's one of those things where, like, the beat's going, and it's like one of those record scratches, like, who I forget? Oh, yeah, fuck that ugly ass baby. Fuck. <laughs> I, I don't know when the song I be playing that shit in the wine shop, and, like, people stop, and they're like, what? Who, who is she talking about? Like, yeah. I don't even know who this is, but, like, yeah. I don't know who this, when this is from, but Mick Jenkins had a really great diss song against, I think, Vic Spencer called Head Ass. Um, where he just like, he really goes after him. Uh, and it's like a Catronada beat. I don't know. I just remember really enjoying it. Um, I'm looking at the lyrics. Uh... I don't know. This is not. <laughs> Basically, he's just like, you're 34, you're too old. Uh, and now that I'm 34, I'm like, no, 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 that's like the appropriate age. Uh, <laughs> nah, it is funny with, with the diss tracks, too, because, like, I think, Dove, I want to say me and you was was talking about that the last time I was there. Where I was saying I would never be like a part of none of that shit. Or somebody. And what me yeah. and you were talking about, yeah, yeah. Like, because I was saying, I'm like, it's cool or whatever, but I never, like, to me, I'm never, especially with another MC, I'm never getting involved in none of that. I told Duff, I'm like, I would rather literally just come to your show and beat you up before I get you up. <laughs> now I remember. Yeah, you were here with Bug Belly. Yeah. yeah. I don't see the best diss track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To me, that, that's better than anything I can say on this song. Just pulling you off stage when you ride. It's more satisfying, too. <laughs> Slava, you're not in the position to admit to any more crimes on recording. I was actually going to deflect super quick and say that we forgot one of the best recent rap disses of all time, which is Your Beard is Weird. Fuck that song. <laughs> what song? Who is that? I don't know what that is. Bro, that's no, MGK, MGK. Uh, Eminem, Eminem Biss. Biss. Like uh, MGK be M- going at people. MGK rapped at Jack Harlow because Jack Harlow said Dude, you've, 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 MGK you've, done, you've done this bit before. You've done this bit before. <laughs> it's not a bit. I like MGK's music. Lace up. <laughs> Alright, man. Um <laughs> And back back to shaving your head again. Okay. Yeah. Let the record show Fat Boy Sharif has given a thumbs down in a Roman Emperor style <laughs> manner. Um <laughs> to mgk yeah put uh, put them in the fucking coliseum man oh, yeah. make them fight 12 lions i don't know have you ever been like have you ever been dissed by another rapper no not that i know of. what are you gonna do when mgk this is you spit on him <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> No, and, and it's funny because I want to say I never been this, but I want to say probably like six, probably like six or seven years back, I had a rap partner at the time. I was telling you about this too, uh, Dove. And somebody just te- he was saying somebody just step on the song, and like he sent me the song. He was like, "Yo, I think this dude talking about me." Um, and I want to say he messaged them like on. IG or something and asked him like I heard you say this is this about me and he was like dude never responded so he was like yo if you don't respond back <laughs> then I'm, 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 gonna make, I'm gonna make a diss song about him and I told him I was like bro that shit is whack like leave it alone like that dude or nobody like just keep let's just keep doing what we doing like I'm like if you really feel like, feel that strongly about it just see him when you see him like the world only but so big like so, nah, man. That's how Avon ended up having to deal with Marlo, man. It was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, long story short, 
It's like, yo, he's a he's small fish. He ain't nothing. And the next thing you know, like, yeah, you're at war. Mm. Yeah, no, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, next thing, so my dude does the diss track, but like I told him, it wasn't, nothing ever came from it. The diss track was just out. And I'm like, yo, cool, dope joint, but I'm just like, bro, literally, if you really want to see if he got an issue with you, just be like, yo, we having this show tonight. Come to this show. And we can talk. <laughs> I'm, like, oh. I'm telling yeah, you, that age is better. Me. That age is better than a mediocre song. Yeah. Not even the song could be fucking great, but like I said, I like real life shit. So if you if somebody if you diss me on a song, say whatever. Literally, I'd rather just come to your show and just strip you naked at your show <laughs> in front of all your fans. <laughs> Literally, you can't make a song after that. The song, the song part is over. <laughs> no, you, yeah, I mean, you can, but you're going to have to have your dick out the whole time. And like, yeah, because that's who you are now. Yeah. Like, not not taking it, not the past music, but I'm just saying, like, because a lot of it's like, if we, if it's all in the sport of just us doing some shit with, and this is or whatever, but sometimes shit go overboard. So, like, I'm a, when stuff go overboard, you got to kind of nip it in the bud quick. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and like, I don't know, I think especially in sort of like mainstream rap world, a lot of things are like, it's very like pro wrestling like, and, you know, a diss track is often just like a, you're cutting a promo. Um, like, the game, the game will just like, he'll just like go down uh, like a list the wikipedia list of rappers and like diss all of them until one of them responds <laughs> and then he like he's like aha yes a beef <laughs> <laughs> kind of smart it's working for him <laughs> Dog, what's some of your uh what's some of your favorite beef songs or different incidents i think you, there's no uh, uh t-shirts and buttons I yeah, that, was, that, one. that one's not bad, but you can't like keep listening to it. It's not like a catchy song. What about Fuck but, Kevin Durant? F- yeah, are, yeah. yeah. L- Lil B has some of the best <laughs> diss tracks. Uh, yeah. Fuck Kevin Durant's a great song. I don't think Fuck there's Kevin a clear winner in Ether versus Take o- Takedown. What is it? Takeover? Takeover. There's no clear winner for me in that. I think those two, just two really good songs. Man, what what song uh, is he the LP? The Kevin LP Durant. Sold This is good. Brown paper, brown paper bag is fucked Thank up in Durant. You. Thank you. Uh, also, 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 I think like, uh, fucking take over is just the superior track. I hear you. And yeah. just I, the age I was when I heard those songs. There's no way for me to pick a winner. I love them both so much that yeah, it's just I could listen to. Both. I did. I did re-listen to both over COVID, and I was like, I, it was like, yeah, Nas was just being mean. Jay Z was stating facts, so like, yeah, that's one of those things. Yeah. So you take you take it one verse over uh, four verses with an entire hook and its intro and all that. Yeah, man, it was it was what you were talking about, man. It's more devastating. Like, yeah, Nas was here's the thing. Nas was clearly in his feelings when he made Ether, and Jay Z was just like, oh, let me just like throw some casual shit at you, and like, yeah, one one dude was very very mad on track, and the other dude was just like, okay, I I don't care that much, but I will address this. And I think that's really good hate and shit, where it's just like, I don't really care, but this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I'm going to say, look, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this shit because I got other stuff to do. Yeah. But like, Nas definitely spent like five days on those verses. Nah, he was, he was going <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. He was going crazy on that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say it was a bad song. I'm just saying, like, as a better diss track, it was like, yeah, man, it was Takeover. Yeah. Uh, if you want to hear a good diss song, LP has a good diss song about this guy named soul i think that beef is squashed or whatever it's ancient but yeah, it's like like two... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but he's really good at making it a diss song <laughs> yeah, that's Yo, that's so... can we can we talk about how eminem's mom didn't even respond once <laughs> yeah yeah neither did kim uh. <laughs> no the funny did you hear the eminem uh, uh mom i'm sorry song no. Oh, oh clean, clean that, I clean skip. out my closet. No, 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 no. It's a song from a new album. It's called. Uh, I, all right, bro. I haven't listened <laughs> to Eminem album since like fucking two thousand eight. 
Maybe. Um, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's called headlights. It's basically him saying that he's sorry for all of the bullshit he was saying when he was immature. And <laughs> he yeah, I, got, I, 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 I got a theory I haven't quite figured out yet, but I think like Eminem is part of the reason we have like Elon Musk stands. <laughs> and I can't really like explain it fully, but like I mm. do think like there's a there's some kind of line between the two. <laughs> Trey, did you know that on his latest album, Eminem made a song from the perspective of Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas shooter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I did not know that. That's insane. Um, Does that I help your theory? Uh, yeah, it does <laughs> actually. Yeah, it really, it really fucking does actually. <laughs> That's funny. All right, Sharif. Are you are you, are you are you are you are you making that up? Like no, I swear no, to God, it's really true. good. It's really good. It's really Wait, it's that's song. true. Yeah, I know the exact song and the album he's talking about. It was like a single. Was, <laughs> that was a yeah. sing. That was a single. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a video for it. They were playing that on the radio. It's a video for it. It wasn't like what. Radio, it was, yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. somebody spent like two million dollars making an Eminem video about the Vegas shooter. Yeah. Well, Detail right. too. All right, man. It's called art. You know, yeah, you know what? You're right. It is. Yeah. It's the first true crime rap. No, that would be I, I, Who yeah, Killed It yeah. by Nas, where he raps as like a gumshoe. It's the song after Hip Hop is Dead on the album Hip Hop is Dead. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> See? Nah, wouldn't that be regular? I thought it was the Regulators. Regulators is a good song, man. Yeah, and that is true That's crime. Sharif is not. just. <laughs> He, he, he's downing. <laughs> what to, re to regulators too? No, not to regulators. No, no, uh, the Nas joint. Uh, <laughs> the where he's going, nah, see? Yeah, he did do that. A <laughs> I mean, Nas got some definite. He's got some like MFA creative writing, uh, like Idaho get workshop. bad comments from your cohort style uh experiments in his catalog um all right what's the worst song you've ever made oh <laughs> uh, i can't even fucking answer that like the fuck nine times it didn't get made so mm. <laughs> Cause I'm not one of those people who literally release everything I record. Okay. So yeah, 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 I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that. Like to me, you always, you record a lot of stuff and then you kind of know what the special joint says and mm. you punch them out like that. Well, yeah. I mean, like I, I've like gone through periods of my life where I was like a freelance writer, like full time. And so I have a lot of experience writing the worst article I've ever written. Um, and, but most of those are like, I need money. Um, and if I don't put this out, I don't get money. Uh, so I think that's also like a good position to be in where you're like, I'm an artist. I'm not like, yeah, I'm only putting out good shit. Yeah, cause you know, you know how strong it is when you make it. So, mm -hmm. if you make, if you write it, record it, listen back to it, and it's not really making you go crazy, like the song could be dope, but it's just like, eh, it don't need to come out. I can do something. I can do something else. <laughs> like, like um, is is that how like some people get themselves in trouble? Because like you hear about some artists and in interviews who are like they answer this question and they answer with like one of their most popular songs. Like how the clips hates doing uh last time, and they're like, yo, unless it's in the contract, we will not perform that song. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, it was like I, 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 I hate that beat. It's like, doo, 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 doo. I, I fucking hate that sound. Like, why did Pharrell put that in the song? Like, I fucking hate that song. Like, <laughs> well, no, I, I think that's kind of, I think that's different for the aspect of just like, you might be tired of doing that song where it's like, oh shit. This is my popular song. I got to do it. No, nah, I think they were, I, I can't speak for them, but I think they were hating. They was like, I don't know. I think we just like recorded that song as a compromise or whatever. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, yeah, I think they just like legitimately hate that song. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, yeah like, I, never, I never seen him do it live, so you might be right. How many times have you seen him live? Nah, just like twice. twice. Yeah, I mean, that's enough times when I see them do one of their most popular songs, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, in a way, like, it's compromised, kind of like a vehicle to Hayden. Like, when you have to do things you don't really want to do, but you're like, this would be good just for, like, the relationship or, like, me being able to work with this person, Diana, like... Nah, I think, because to me, like, if you hate it, hate it, you're not going to do it. To me, compromise, like, as artists, we compromise a lot. So even with just doing the album, me and Dove, we made the album, and we both had different track lists, dude. All right, let me see what your song, okay, how about I put this song over this song? Oh, that you don't think that's how this dope? All right, how about we tried it? Like, different things all the time as artists, like, but... Just, I don't think me and Doug was on some, like, I hate this. You don't hate it. Let's still put it out. Damn shit. Um, I mean, uh, Dove slash Joe, um, have you ever had an experience, um, as a producer where you're like, oh man, I love this beat. I have given it to an artist who I believe will do it justice. And then they give it back. And you're like, uh, tug at the collar. <laughs> Not in a long time, but certainly when I was younger, yeah. And I, I can't remember specifics, but I can certainly remember the feeling because you just kind of hope that there's some version of it not getting finished and not coming out, you know? <clears throat> and, like, there's ways to, like, kind of push that, making sure it doesn't come out, like, Oh, I lost the stems. Oh, I still haven't mixed it. Or you just start ignoring that. Artist. I accidentally but sampled like, the Beatles. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> know. Nah, but sometimes, to me, depending on the relationship with the person, or sometimes you just got to be like, yo, that shit whack. Do that shit over. Like, I think you can do something better to it. Right. Um, nah, as artists, we all, everybody, like, everybody want to have an ego and shit. And I'm just kind of like, nah, bro, like, it's cool, but you can do something different to it. You can do something better with it. Like, yeah, it's been a long time since I've like really been like, oh no. <laughs> when you're doing a track with somebody, Sharif, and like, do you feel like a sense of competition ever? Like, all right, I have to like make sure that my verse is like on par or better uh, than theirs or anything like that. Yes, yeah, to me it's always about complimenting the song and making it the best song. So mm -hmm. even like when people reach out for features and stuff, I always uh, want to hear what they got first. All right, cool. I'm gonna make something that go what you what, what you got, but put my own style on it to make it a complete experience for the listener, like on both ends. Vice versa, when I'm doing a feature for somebody for their project, I'll always all right, what's the vibe of this? Okay, we doing this? All right, we're... And I, sometimes I might send two or three different versions, like, which one of these you like out of this, this, and this type thing, like, and put it together like that. And sort of, like, when, you, when you're writing for your own music, like, how does that start? Do you, like, say, okay, I want to write a song about this, or do you have, like, a bar in your head and you kind of build out from there? Like, yeah. For me, I always, it starts with the beat. So usually I'll get a beat and I'll take it home and sleep to it. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it like on the speakers of my crib and sleep through it overnight. So I'll put it on repeat for like six, seven, six, seven hours at night. I'll do that wow. for a few days. I'll do that for a few days. After that, usually when I'm sleeping, I'll dream of the beat. So I'll get certain colors and shapes in my head of what the music is saying. And That's then from sad. that, it's kind, of, it's kind of just like, all right, how can I put these shapes and colors into these words? All right, Dennis, how can I put these words into this expression, the way the beat making me feel? And kind of craft it out like that. And then sometimes I might switch it where I'll do the same thing, listen to the beat, and I'll write a short story for a beat. So, 
beat might be literally painting the whole picture for me that I'll write out and be like, all right, how can I make these lyrics speak this story? But not having me the same thing as the story type thing. Like super fascinating. Uh and that's a much better answer than my whack ass question deserved. Um <laughs> nah, it was a dope question. I'll fuck with it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I mean, no, I like to think about process. Like, so, I'm really glad uh, I went to the bathroom during this. Okay. <laughs> um, Slava, when he was locked up, he wrote a book, and he was telling me that he would like write the pages, like hand write them on paper, and then go to the computer and type them up, and. I was actually writing a book myself at the time and I borrowed that technique from him and it was, it worked out really well. Yeah, no, I have you. Do you hell still have your pages, Drew? Um, I have some of them. I threw others of them out. Like Emily and I, they were in like a set of drawers uh, that in a room that Emily and I were like, all right, we have to like, clean this fucking room up because it's it's not finished we've lived in this house for like a year and i was just like throwing away shit willy-nilly and like half the book is gone <laughs> oh shit sharif do you uh, write anything down and if like on paper it's funny i was super duper like only wrote in notebooks and stuff so probably like six years like six years ago because and it happened, I was on the way to the studio to record a feature for somebody. And I was going to write when I got to the studio. But halfway to the studio, literally the whole idea of the song came in my head. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to forget this shit if I don't write it or something. So I wrote that in my phone. And from then, I was just <laughs> <getting> made the post. <laughs> I mean... That's cool though. Like I feel like writing in your phone versus by hand versus on a computer, they like triggered different brain pathways or something. Yeah. No, I I'm definitely about to get back into I wanna go back to writing it and I wanna write it in notebooks and write it in phones now. Like I wanna go for the book to the phone. Just to kind of What's your handwriting like? Uh Okay, decent. <laughs> Not okay. good. Is it? Is this one of those things where it's like only you can read it, or like it's oh, no, no. really your... okay. Oh no! no, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do Do you write printer cursive? Print. When you're writing by hand, do you do print or cursive? Yeah, print. Uh, print. print. Okay. Okay. All caps. Nah. Okay. I started doing all caps. It's more fun. But yeah, like, I was about to ask Slava, like, do you do all caps? I do or... all caps. Yeah, it's way more fun. Okay. You're already writing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did do when I wrote the notebooks. I would write in different color uh, pens and markers to kind of have different emotions. So really? if I would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So if I'm writing something that's a little more copper, that might be a blue or purple. Something that's a little more gray. That'd be a gray or red. And I could kind of just mentally take my brain in before the words even come out. Just by seeing it on the paper type thing. Right. Interesting. Okay, so I, I missed a like dumb a... question. So I'm going to ask a dumb question real quick. Like, did you have several different color pens or did you have one of those pens that's like green, red, black, blue, like around the whole thing and you push one down and then like, yeah. Oh, no, it was different, uh, <laughs> different uh, marked pens. Okay, cool. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. The, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like, I feel like that was like a status symbol in elementary school. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, like, I could do, oh, I could do my own pogs. test. Yeah, I could like do my own test and like when we're doing like grading each other's work or whatever. <laughs> I could just not even have to switch pens. It's just like, huh, yeah. I'm gonna punish you with the sword I slayed you with, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sharif, you're from Jersey, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what part of Jersey? Broadway. That's like Broadway. about 
uh, Union County. So that's like 30 minutes from North, like 45 minutes from New York driving. Okay. Um, who's the best uh, New Jersey rapper? I can't really break it down to one because it's a lot of different styles and techniques out of Jersey that we always had from back in the day till now. And even just certain sections, like if you sew with more Essex County wise, those MCs got a totally different style and vocabulary than somebody from South Jersey when you get close to the Philly. So it's always dope, just the different school of Jersey MCs and the different styles you'll hear. Redman is definitely one of them. Yeah, I was about to say, like, man. Yeah, Red is definitely. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not super well versed in Jersey rap, but like I was about to say, like Red Man. Is... Red is definitely one of the top tier ones up there for a fact. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I really like like on the contemporary tip. I really like the shit that's going on in Newark with like Bandman Rill and uh, MC Vert, his like producer, right now. Um, that stuff is like. Uh, I think like really pushing boundaries and shit, both like sonically and in terms of like I don't know, Bandman Real just really good rapper. Yeah, North. It's like yeah. uh, also all the kids who are like rapping over like the fucking Jersey and Philly club music stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's Bandman Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm also talking about like Zasosa and fucking uh. What's his name? D Sturdy. Oh, those sides. guys are Philly, but their producer is this guy named DJ Crazy, who's like right across the water in Jersey. Yeah, well, well, well that makes it Jersey stuff. <laughs> yeah, True. Sorry. True fact sorry. stated. Yeah. Sorry, I just said because you know, just 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 you know, just because you put Brooklyn on the front of it doesn't make it UK Drew. Or yeah, you know, it doesn't <laughs> not make it UK Drew. It's all you know. Yeah, this is the one time I will give credit to England for everything or anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and soccer, then, like that's cool, but like, yeah. How do you feel about soccer? There's, there's, an, there's an entire episode about this where I feel about soccer. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, Sharif. Uh, what do you feel about soccer? Yeah. No, funny thing, I used to fuck with soccer heavy in school. I used to let him play fucking soccer. <laughs> but besides, sitting there, having Super been tapped in with it, I obviously seen a couple games here and there, but that's mostly it. You watch like the World Cup you? final when it comes on. Nah. <laughs> I'll see it if I'm out somewhere, like at a bar or a strip club and that shit on. But yeah, oh, if you okay. soccer around at the strip club, you're there way too early. Oh, I've, I know. I've watched soccer at a strip club before. Um, at night? No, this was like the 2010 World Cup and U.S. England was playing and I was back home in D.C. So like they had a show in the Union Square, but it was like 110 degrees outside. So we watched like the first half and then we tried like going fine in a bar where this was like close to Georgetown. So, uh, yeah, we went and like found a bar. I forget the name of it, but it was the only one that wasn't open for it. And they just had the game on. And yeah, there was like the opening shift stripping while we were sitting there, like trying to eat wings and watch the <laughs> World Cup. Oh my God! <laughs> there was a there was there was also a huge altercation about like one of the dancers ate one of the other dancers' chicken tenders. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, which she shouldn't have done that. And the one who was mad was justified. But like, yeah, was, I was I was also trying to watch the game, and they were like. <laughs> people holding them back they were screaming at each other like, yeah yeah <laughs> seems like a, uh see now that's funny because i've never i never i've seen shrimp club fights before but i never seen them with the actual dancers over food products so that's the first oh bro this was like uh, this match might have started at like noon like yeah it was this was early in the day nobody wants to be up that early doing anything in a strip club not like working not eating not watching the world cup but we're all we're all there because circumstances led us there I feel like yeah 
Yeah, this, um, this, yeah. Uh, speaking of hate, and let's talk about capitalism for a minute. Um, yeah, but nah, it's yeah, it's one of my favorite soccer watching experiences, and I've had a bunch of them. And um, yeah, man, that girl, that girl was right to be mad about her chicken tenders getting Nate. Nah, I would have had to if I was her. I would have had to choke her out. I'm like, you owe me some fucking chicken, goddammit. Well, here's the, well, here, well, here's the thing. We don't know for a fact that was the girl who ate her tenders. She just assumed it was her. <laughs> oh. And I think there was some prior beef there. Oh, like, I, intuition. No, because I, because uh, yeah, because like, okay, personally, and I can say this now because it's like a decade down the line. Um, I saw that play come out. I did not see anyone else approach it and eat a chicken tender. Oh man. <laughs> And I just assumed because I was watching the game and I didn't know this or whatever, but like, I also just did not see anybody walk him and eat that tender. That shit was sitting out there for like, you know, three minutes before she got to it. And then she ate one and was like, wait, who the fuck ate my tender? So like, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> so you, you're like, this is like the fucking JFK assassination of interest stripper <laughs> roles at a strip club. I mean, like, yeah, now that you put it that way, it might be. <laughs> You're Zap Ruder over here. Yeah, I, oh, okay. Well, there was another, there was another chicken, the chicken tender itself was on the grassy knoll. It was a babushka lady. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, the, yeah, you, it's like JFK just had the music banging so hard. He was like, I just want Dallas to hear all of this. <laughs> I want Dallas to know who UGK is. Like, yeah, just put this fucking yeah. <laughs> you think Tony Soprano ever listened to like Redman? Of course. Well, he used to drop AJ off. Yeah, yeah. AJ had him listen to some shit, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, let me hear what influencing the, the youth nowadays. Tony well, Soprano I'm... heard Lil Wayne before most people heard Lil Wayne. Like, yeah. <laughs> Probably so. On his way to cheat on Carmella. He like, turn yeah, on lock. I want to hear this shit. <laughs> what was the name that strip club they owned? Oh, the Bada Bing? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tony Soprano heard a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, Tony Soprano's probably got like some shadow money and back that ass up. Where, that's yeah, actually, yeah. That's that's where Little Wayne got bling bling from. He went to Tony Soprano's strip club. He's like, I'm fucking put an L in that word. That's mine now. <laughs> okay, first of all, it's on a BG album. It's BG's fucking song, and Lil Wayne is only on that song because w Turk was originally on it. And uh, the day was supposed to shoot the video, uh, Turk was doing drugs in the projects, and they couldn't get a hold of him. So they're like, Wayne, we need you to just like do this real quick, and it just became iconic. Bada Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's like yeah. Hell yeah, I guess. Lil, Lil, yo, Lil, Lil, Lil Wayne was shark in the water, smelled some blood and took it. Hell yeah. And, yeah. I, was thinking, I guess Turk and heroin zero, Lil Wayne won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the, that's the thing about being the youngest person in the group. You just got to wait, wait everybody else out. They're gonna like hit adolescence. They're gonna get into some shit, and then you slide in there, and you're like, "I'm still young enough to be like uncorrupted." <laughs> well, well, relatively. Relatively. <laughs> uh, is so, that is that Hayden? Nah, you gotta play your position. Or so. Okay. No, no, no. Hayden would be if the morning of the shoot. Uh, Wayne pulled you, up. You, 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 you gave you gave Turk the heroin. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah, right. yeah. I was gonna say, hey, this Wayne pulling up your Turk. I got some grade A, them cow shit. Yeah, I got that dog food, bro. Like yeah, Purina. Like yeah, yeah. Even to him, he called Birdman. Yo, Turk in his sleep. What's good with the video shoot? I can come down. I'm right down the street. Oh, you can make it. Oh, that's dope. And, and the rest is history. All right. We know for a fact Wayne did not give Turk the. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just making so wait, sure. is so playing your position is good, but telling someone to play their position is hating. 
Well, I mean, it depends on what their position is. Like, if their position is like nobody who's told to play their position, yeah, nobody who who is told that has a good position. Like, 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 what, what's the difference between just be a weed carrier versus like shut up and dribble? I mean, I guess speaking of that, and this is also sort of a question for Joe. Uh, part of like the Fat Boy Sharif world um, on your album with Steel Tip Dove, who is of course in the studio. I wish we had a Drink Champs button uh, that we could push for something like this. Um, part of like that is like music videos where it's like you are performing the song and Joe is like sitting there and one he's like uh on some stairs behind you and then in another you're standing on a bridge and joe's like on some rocks below the bridge yeah uh, how do you guys work that out like who's standing where <laughs> i listen to the video director <laughs> okay uh and just feel uncomfortable no matter where i'm standing but uh <laughs> the 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 project was so strong and Sharif loves being in videos, so I wanted to join. I was easily convinced to be in these couple of videos, although I'm not usually used to it. Um he be frying on the videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Joe, you don't want to be Diddy? Uh. <laughs> I do not. Uh, no. You don't want to be the producer all up in the videos. <laughs> Have never been. It worked out um, well for yeah. Bird, man. You know, like, yeah, yeah. No, because I was just, Dove, I'm just picturing you with that type of personality now. Like, just showing up with, like, an open, see through shirt and having on, like, <laughs> shiny ass gold pants dancing in the video. I would be like, what the fuck is going on? Like, you big should ass try that. Dove, big ass Dove tied across his chest. And, and like, yeah, six yeah. figures and up for that. Video. Do it for one video, Dove. I'm telling you. Find someone with the budget and we can make it happen. The whole life would change. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Find someone with the budget. We'll make it happen. Right, I want it. I want it. I got you. <laughs> okay, that might be the first Nersey GoFundMe. Is yes. that we? Uh, yeah. Six figures and up. <laughs> yeah, um, a guy. A guy wanted to make a potato salad, and he had like a nine dollar GoFundMe, and that shit raised like a million dollars. So we <laughs> can, we can find the budget for this. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, he had to throw a potato salad festival so that they would release the funds. So, like, because it, it, it legit looked like money laundering. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you come up with, like, your dances in the music videos and also live? Do you have a set of moves that you go to? Or is it spontaneous? Wait, uh, say it one more time. My bad. How do you come up with your dances in the music videos and like sort of dance moves, emotive going like uh, stuff like that? No, it's literally uh, kind of all just actually come really depending on how the, the vibe of the music in the soul at the time. I kind of let it just take over from there. Okay. The stage shows, yeah. I ask because uh, we had the rapper Jimmy Prime uh, from Toronto on recently, and he told us that he beat Justin Bieber in a dance-off. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, so I was like, I was trying to like, stoke a <coughs> dance-off between y'all two. Why'd you say, why'd you say like, damn, that's fire, like you don't believe that happened? Because <laughs> cause now that he said that, I want to have a dance battle with Chris Brown, and let's see what happens. Oh. Uh, oh, I will yeah, okay, pay per view. <laughs> See, let's start the go for me for that. We do the Chris I, Yeah, for sure. The money, the money we make from the Chris Brown will do the uh the Dove Diddy Combs shit. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's harder to win a dance battle than a rap battle? Yeah, probably so. Like you personally. Oh, if I was in a dance battle? Like, yeah, like, which one would you have to prepare more for if you knew you had to do both tomorrow? The dance battle, probably. Because I, I would want to do shit like walk on top of people's shoulders and have 
people pick me up at a certain part of the wait, dance wait, 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 What? Like Cirque du Soleil <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want it to be some some Moulin Rouge shit. A flash you know? mob. Oh, like uh, Pink does at her concerts with the ribbons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would need. I would want to do something spectacular. So I would need a minute <laughs> to put all of that together. Wait, you said run on people's shoulders, like, like in what context? No, just like have a part, have one piece of the song where people just pick me up and I stand on their shoulders, then they put me back down, then I slide on some water, some crap. I'm telling you, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, Omarion style. Yeah, 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 for a fact. Um, what about, what about I, the Miguel jump? Do you think you would do that? <laughs> uh, I would want to do something different. Cause he did it already. So. Well, I don't mean like I mean like actually completing it, not like almost killing somebody. Who's jump? What? Miguel. Miguel. He like he pinned that poor girl's <laughs> neck to the barricade. Yeah, it, 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 it was, was astral oh. world, but worse. It, it's like something they don't do in the WWE because they're like, this is too dangerous, and he accidentally did it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, probably be the same effect for me too. Yeah, no, um, I'm talking about like actually clearing it though. Like, would you want to attempt the Miguel jump and like actually clear it? Not really. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Sharif, have you ever wrapped something that someone thought was a diss? Oh no. Nah. Like, no one's ever. You've never been misconstrued, have you? No, no, no. Just construed. No. Nah. <laughs> So you've never had like a cannabis LL situation? Hell no. <laughs> Cause yeah, the- something like that, and yeah, nah, not at all. To tell you the truth, was one of those a mistake? <laughs> yeah, I never misconstrue. Say it again. Was one of those a misconstrue, a miscommunication, cannabis and? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was on. Four three two one or one two three four, I forget which, but like, yeah, cannabis. Or, yeah, or do you want to say it? Because I, yeah, you're the guest. Oh no, no, no. you. I would just say it was four three two one. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, it was like a thing where uh, cannabis, I think, like begins his verse by ad libbing, like, "Yo, let me grab that mic on your arm," uh, from because LL Cool J has like a mic tattooed on his arm okay yeah and uh ll cool j like heard this and was like oh man i'm being dissed by cannabis and so he like (laughs) re-records his verse to just like eviscerate cannabis and then i think takes cannabis off the song jesus okay that happened uh quest love it's it was like kind of an Questlove told a story on the new podcast he's doing with Open Mike Eagle about how uh, Biggie thought the Roots dissed him by accident because they used certain words in a song. Damn. And like, yeah, there's the cra- he tells a crazy story about how Diddy actually came to a show and like they went all in a room to talk it out and stuff. Like it's it was crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think Questlove would have beat the shit out of Diddy. He, oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 Quest, yeah, yeah. Questlove didn't seem seem to think so at the time. Yeah, the way he tells the story. Well, no, because Diddy don't fight fair, and he had a crew with him. You, you, yeah, you can tell Diddy does not fight fair. But he, he tried. He al- allegedly, allegedly tried to assassinate Kid Cudi. I would say he definitely would have uh, had a bomb Which, in his like, drum set. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Also, that's the funniest hating I've ever heard. Is just like Diddy hating on Kid Cudi to the point it's like, oh yeah, this is how they some world wars almost started. I'm gonna <laughs> fucking yeah, crazy. Nah, yeah, that's a, that's funny shit. Because I'm picturing even just like in a situation like I'm thinking of if I'm dating a girl and she leave me for another dude. In my head, I'm like, once I'm away from that girl. I'm not even thinking of the stuff that it takes to hit. Like, oh, I'm about to make a bomb. Put that shit in the fucking car. <laughs> 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 I'm 
It's like, yo, I'm not even fucking this chick no more. Uh, also, he didn't, no, you know, you know, no, here's the, he didn't do it himself. So he paid somebody. He went down to Brighton Beach or some shit. And, like, yeah, I got a dude from down there who was just like, oh, yes, I, I know bombs. And, yeah. <laughs> so you're saying Diddy was a hater? <laughs> if you're if you're bombing somebody's yeah. car and like hater shit. yeah that's hater shit man <laughs> that's hater shit. yeah nah definitely hater shit see that's what I'm saying to me that now that's the epitome of hater shit somebody said something about me on a song I'm sure Cuddy would be like diss me all you want just don't fucking blow up my car bro damn <laughs> yeah that's traumatizing every time he like goes to turn his car on now he's thinking maybe it's flinching. No, Cuddy only has like the fucking like key fob that has like the push start on it, like from a radius away. Like he's like, nah, he's I'm not taking a like, chance. He's yeah. starting like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the craziest shit with that is, imagine like in my head, I'm thinking, how further could the person go? So the next thing is, damn, he might blow my fucking house up when I'm asleep. Uh, you never know, like type shit. Like it can get crazy. <laughs> The thing is, like, they never said what kind of bomb it was, so maybe it was like glitter. It was we a bomb. No, no, no. It was, it, if it was a glitter bomb, they would have said it was a glitter bomb. It was a bomb. I mean, that's fucking. That's so that's insane, also insane. Man. When's the last time you heard about like someone's car getting bombed? I mean, I watched Casino like three months ago. <laughs> what year did Casino come out? Like and what year was six? and what year was it based in? Yo, you know that's where Diddy got the idea too. You watch Casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, actually, actually, I believe that. Oh my God, that's. Really I crazy. actually, it didn't work that. in Casino. Like, it didn't work in real life entire, either. Yeah, yeah. It, an entire movie happens while Robert De Niro is flying through the air, and then he like wakes up and he's working at a track. And then he made Man on the Moon three. Then he, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why Kid Cudi made Dude, you, his, like, you know, you, acoustic you, you, album. Maybe that's you you know how many move. people see something happen and they're like, oh, that's a good idea, but I would do it this way so it didn't fail, and then they fail too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I completely believe that Diddy watched Casino and fucking that was his inspiration for trying to assassinate Kid Cudi. <laughs> and yes, it was an assassination attempt. Um, Sharif, you're really into Kubrick, right? Yeah, he the shit. That's the man right there. Yeah. Um, are what's your you... top three? What's your top three Kubrick? Me personally, I'll do uh, Eyes Wide Shut, yes. Shining, yes. and I either want to say Full Metal Jacket or um, 2001. But that's that's strong either way. Yeah. No, matter. I take that back. Okay. Take out. <laughs> okay. Take, no, no. Take out Full Metal and put 2001. All right. And it, okay. So it Full is uh, on the bottom. Yeah, is that an, is that an order? Or is that just like your top three? That's my order. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna agree with that. I would say Clockwork and uh, two Clockwork and Full Metal Jacket is honorable mentions right there. Like, uh, okay. my, my one is Eyes Wide Shut. Funny thing. Eyes Wide Shut is that one is by far my favorite Kubrick. Like, it's just yeah. so fucking funny. <laughs> it's fucking weird. What that one like, scene when like yeah, Tom Cruise just walking down the street and goddamn. Uh... Yeah, they push him into the car and start calling him slurs. Or I'm telling you, the craziest part of that damn movie, the random ass shit when he go inside of the fucking store and that Chinese guy in there with that girl. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like, you no, know, because the funniest yeah. thing is like, you know, Kubrick made them do those scenes like 50 times each. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's just like, I gotta call him the f word again. Like when I'm pushing him to a car, or like, yeah, it's like, no, but like, yeah, but like with more force, you know? Crazy. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, in Heat, when they made uh, Al Pacino do like the great ass line like 37 times, like, yeah, that. 
<laughs> yeah, directors are fucking psychos, man. Like, if you want to talk about some Hayden. <laughs> No, Alba, I think it was Al Pacino said, like, yo, they made me do the line 37 times, and the 37th take is the one they took. And, <laughs> Screamed it? Yeah, because he was so fed up. <laughs> he was like, okay, fine, I'll fucking do it. And he's like, great ass! I forgot who I heard is, like, the hardest director to work with with that type of shit. I want to say it might have been... It might be Kubrick, because even... Uh, yeah, because he made people do all of it a lot. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was cold I, as hell outside, man. Yeah, and then he had him out there doing the shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, for a fact, that's what like because even like Shelley Duvall when she was playing Wendy, she was saying like she was crying at the end of it because she had to <laughs> go so crazy and get into that uh, role, and he was being hard on her and shit. I'm like Jesus, but that's what made the magic come across on screen. So can't hit on it. <laughs> I mean, like, if, if, if we're talking about, you know, you know, Workers United and stuff, like, we probably can't talk about that, but that's another thing. That was the 70s. I wasn't alive yet. I couldn't do shit about it, but, like, yeah. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna hate on it because, like, they are terrific movies, but we probably can talk about the methods by which these achievements were gained. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I right, so let me ask you this then. If you saying that, to me, like, if you on the movie set, how far do you think you could? How how much you think you can deal with from the director before you would mentally just be like, all right, I had enough of it, or are you just on some like, gotta get the job done? No, I see, I'm, man, like, because it it was never my life dream to be an actor on a major movie set, but like, I feel like I, it, it, I feel like if I got to this actor at this point and I had been at least like two movies that were big enough, I could be like, man, fuck this, man, I made enough money. Let me go open like a fucking McDonald's franchise and I'll just do that from now on. Like, <laughs> like yeah, oh, and, and then I'll make that three McDonald's franchises because I got the self back. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a bet on myself. Like, yeah. <laughs> No, that's what yeah. I was thinking, because I'm like, damn, it's different if you really wanted to do that since you was, like, three years old, compared to, like, randomly just going to a movie audition, like, oh, you're high, come back in the morning. And it's like, oh, shit. I, I never wanted to do this, but I tried my luck, yeah. and I got And then Martin Scorsese is like, you know what? I've never seen charisma like that. Put him in, yeah, take Leo out. We're putting this guy in. It's like, <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I was in a documentary that hasn't that's coming out like next year or year after and as part after the interview they had me like read something that I'd written and the director was also the interviewer was also the director and so he suddenly switches into director mode and like he makes me read it once and I'm like all right I didn't trip over my words uh great and he's like oh yeah we got to do it again and then I do it again, and I'm like, I'm suddenly like, I'm furious. I how how is this happening? And then I do it the third time, and he's like, that one's the good one. You were you were performing it the other two times, but then this time you were just reading, and I was like, oh, he made me do it multiple times in like the Kubrick way to like fuck with me in order to get yeah. the thing he wanted. Yeah. Um, so I mean, dating. when you're when you're doing like a music video, like how much how much of that do you get from the director? No, it's funny you say that. I was going to say like because we were talking about just like different director methods and stuff like that. I kind of always I kind of put that onto myself. So mm -hmm. like literally like I'll try to like I'll record demos and I'll learn them word for word like a year early just to kind of make myself know it early and be able to always spit it fluently and do it without no stumbles, no mixes. So I do the same thing with videos. Like if I'm shooting a video for a song, I know it like the back of my hand. I'm not really shooting a video for a song that I have to learn or I might not know it the way I like. I know every part of the video I want to do, but I'm going to the director. So it's really just like, yo, I want to shoot this. I want to wear this. I want to capture this. I want to capture that. And a director bring their element to it and enhance the idea. Um, 
How is Joe's sitting uh, on stairs? <laughs> he was a natural. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, he was a natural. I couldn't ask for nobody different. He was like uh, he was a regular Harvey Keitel out there on the screen. <laughs> And Shreve right. would tell me, do it for the art, man. Do it for the art. And I would go in and I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job, man. Um, Thanks, man. Like, I don't know. I feel like if I had had that job, I'd be, like, looking all over the place. I'd be, like, blinking too much. <laughs> I'd be fidgeting. Um, and, like, yeah. Nah, I, I think I think you would have been great. It's kind of, Like I said, it's kind of just on some natural vibe out shit so it was kind of that vibe it wasn't really a we're shooting a video type of vibe it was kind of more just so uh, you know we another day in the office like we do mm. we do what we're supposed to do type thing um i mean both slava and Trey have like they hosted videos for vice uh i right. i didn't because my boss told me literally that i blinked too much you hosted um, one. You hosted the Kiza one. I hosted one where I had to uh, learn a choreographed dance. Um, but like, wait, which one I, was this? Kaiza. Uh, let me see if it's still online. Um, I watch it every Friday, buddy. Of course, it's online. I mean, she's. Uh, oh, here goes Mr. Dark Web over here about to. I got the mechanical keyboard. All right. Great. I am not in the thumbnail. Uh, I'm just going to send this to the chat. Hey, listen, according to newsghana.com, Drew is bad at dancing. Kaiser, on the what? other hand, is very good at dancing. <laughs> yo, what... news, yo, news got to cook to you. Yeah, they got your ass. <laughs> news got to cook to you. Like, as if you're like the only Drew, and it's like, who's bad at dancing, by the way, because there's a bunch of Drews. But it's like, if somebody said, like, oh, Drew, he's bad at dancing, the entire world knows you're bad at dancing, man. They fried your ass. Nerdy ethical guy to hate him, baby. Yeah. Pull this up. Yeah, pull this up right now. Oh, yeah. So they, not only that, they went on to describe it as self conscious flailing. What? Oh, oh, oh. God. Oh, are you, you're just making this up. It's in no, the chat, no, this is This is exactly what this says. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yo, on the Stanley Cooper thing, um, do you think we landed on the moon for real, or do you think we faked that, Sharif? And by we, I mean America. <laughs> what you think about it? I don't think, I think it was fake. I think Kubrick filmed it. I think they had <laughs> been to the moon since, but yeah, that yeah. one time, they faked it. Yeah, no, I definitely feel you. And you know how I know that? The carpet in The Shining. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that documentary, like Room Five Thirty Seven or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I seen it on uh, Shutter. I want to say it's on Shutter. Yeah, yeah. That. That's all the proof you need. Yeah. Yeah. If it's on Shutter, it's. it's Definitely facts. true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know about the like Eyes Wide Shut conspiracy theory? The like Illuminati type shit. Yeah, the Illuminati killed Kubrick for yeah, Eyes Wide Shut. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that been going around for years. <laughs> wait, how wait, do you feel what? about that one? That's fucked up. Why would Jay Z do that? <laughs> wow. Imagine, imagine if that information came out like tomorrow morning randomly. Oh my god. Yeah. Nah. Okay, so nothing would happen. Because there were black people in it. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. No, like it that, would just yeah. it would be hot. It would be hot news at the time. I'm saying, obviously, it wouldn't be like, oh shit, the the FBI is coming to take him to jail. But I'm just picturing like uh, somebody getting set up, and they just giving that out as information. Like, you know what? I'll give you. I'll tell you all of the dark secrets of Hollywood. Jay Z <laughs> got <laughs> like <or some> shit. <laughs> um. I mean, we have a Illuminati for like a bunch of agricultural industries, so like I don't know why we wouldn't have an Illuminati in general. 
and also yeah. why and also, why also like why do you hate them yeah no. like uh, oh you're just not even gonna talk about it do you ever freestyle yeah that's literally how i came up like <laughs> when i first started writing freestyling really? all the time. yeah for a fact same. Um, I do years of just writing and stuff. You do it less sometimes, but I definitely uh, still like to keep at it and freestyle whenever I get a chance here and there for the fight. We want to end this off by doing the first and probably only ever Nersey freestyle and or a freestyle battle with Slava, who... <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no! Definitely the latter. Definitely the latter. Let me pull up my bars on newsgana dot com. Nah, you see, it gotta be, it gotta be natural. It can't be pre. That's pre planned. It. You, I'm just you wrapping already... the headlines on newsgana dot com. It's up to me to deliver it in a clever way. You know? also have uh, you. You all saw that video of like the accidental Bronson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's like that's kind of an accidental Bronson. Like, yeah. <laughs> I get my freestyle from dudes kind of online. Oh, yeah. oh, I cannot be rapping this. This is bad <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, you know, read, read some of them. Anti LGBTQIA plus law outweighs Ghana's cathedral project. Uh, I don't, his I don't know skin what that unhappy That's with not, the president's yeah. decision on death penalty and witchcraft bills. Wait, wait, what's, what's a witchcraft? You, you gotta click that one. What's a witchcraft? Got you, got you. Yeah, you. What, Mega what? six lotto partner, Romanus, incomplete V to celebrate rib cracking comedy in Ghana. Um, the speaker said he would, within this week, deliver a statement to the House on the issue, after which the House could debate on the m -m 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 matter. The speaker made his remarks in the statement on the floor of Parliament after reading out to the House President Nana Ado Dankwa Akufo Ado's letter. Speaker Bagman admitted that the president invited him to discuss the matter concerning the bills, saying when he raised this, I told him that I completely disagree with him and I gave him all my reasons. And the president said in the letters of parliament and explained his decision not to assent to the criminal offenses. Bill 2023, the criminal offense amendment, bill number two, 2023, and the Ghana Armed Force Amendment Bill 2023, citing financial implications for not assenting to the bill. I think we gotta skip forward to the witch part, the witchcraft. Part. Yeah, I, that, that's what that's what I wanted. Okay, all right. It, it, it was it was it, it, it was bars. Like I don't know why you went like Sugar Hill Gang. Flow. I wonder. That's, if that's, like, that's, that's actually the best flow. Yeah. That's the best flow of hip hop ever has come up with. That nursery okay. rhyme shit. I love it. Can we get like the fabulous breathe beat uh, under this? <laughs> 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 um, it criminalizes the act. It criminalizes to the activities of which doctors or which finders entail substantial financial obligations on the consolidated fund and the other public funds of Ghana due to projected costs due to the imprisonment, sustenance, and health care for people who will be convicted under bills when they become law. <gasps> Breath control, just unreal. I don't know what the actual witchcraft is. This is just literally a, a, a news story about a bill being passed, but there's nothing salacious. Yeah. Cool. It sounds like you haven't scrolled down long enough to see what the rich witchcraft thing is, because you would, oh. yeah. Oh, okay. I'm at you, the bottom. Now you go. Now you go. My, my, my rap part is done. I drop mic. All right. Yeah, sure. If you guys ask. He won. I told y'all he won. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's go. Okay, you have to admit to that on Twitter. <laughs> there we go. All the way from Canada. All we right. are going to say when we promo with this episode that he did beat you in a uh, freestyle battle and that you waved the white flag. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just heads up. Yeah. Man, thank you for letting me have this. What a great way to end my year. Thank you, Sharif. <laughs> All right.
Um, we're going to let you go, Sharif. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, nah, that, you... Thanks so much for having me for a fact. Yeah, man. Um, you've got a new EP out with Big Just from CoFlow, right? Yes, yes. Um, it's our special launch. Everybody listening, tune in. Keep that. Show love to that. Support that. That DK. Bunch of stuff coming up. Staying busy. 2024 about to be lit. Um, do you think the Taylor Swift collab is going to come out next year? Uh, not before the John Leguizamo. Okay. <laughs> That's the correct probably, order of those. Probably the John Leguizamo, and then the tail end of that rollout, we'll get into the Taylor Swift. Yeah. It's it's go time. Uh, 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 also, more accidental action branch and shit. Yeah, not before the John Leguizamo. Yeah. <laughs> Get your golden suit ready, Dolph, for the, the Taylor Swift tour. We about to, we start to we start the GoFundMe January first. We started at the top of the year. Bet yo yo let it let us know, man. I'll retweet the hell out of that shit. It sounds like they'll have the budget for me for that. Hell yeah. And we will raise awareness. Um. Yeah, this has been another edition of the Nerzy Guide to Ethical Hating uh, with Fat Boy Sharif. I'm Drew, uh, joined by Trey and Slava and producer Steel Tip Dove. And our theme music is by Craig S. Jenkins.